For the past month or so, I have been uploading never before seen analog horror tapes to my second channel that an anonymous person called M has been sending me via email. These tapes are extremely cryptic, disturbing, and they all seem to point to a deeper real life story, which we will uncover throughout this video. After each tape was posted to my second channel, M would send me another email with the next episode, along with instructions on the date and time it should be uploaded, the exact description the video should have, and the title the video should be called. If any one of those requirements were not met, I would not receive the next episode, and therefore, the full story would never be revealed. Essentially, once I upload that first tape, there's no turning back. From the first email M sent me, I was pretty positive I was not going to play along with whatever strange game they had planned, especially because I get messages like this all the time, and for all I knew, it could end up just being a massive troll. But after actually watching the first tape, I couldn't help but indulge myself into whatever was clearly planned for me in particular. I wanted to see the next tape. There was also a text file attached to the first email that gave me a lot of faith that this whole thing wasn't just one big attention-seeking stunt. But unfortunately, I am legally not allowed to disclose what the contents of that text document was. So, on the 11th of November, the first tape of the Martin Files went public, and my deep dive into this analog horror series began. first tape in the Martin Files is titled Martin's School. The numbers 54.0 can be found in the top of the description and it's also stated that this is tape 1 of 5. The numbers 54.0 are not random and neither is the footage that you are about to watch.
We're introduced to the series via a set of three old commercials promoting some sort of school. And we can tell some things off straight from the start. Are you ready to put your future in your own hands? Royal Academics is the most prestigious school in the north of England. It's the key to unlock your true potential using the power of learning. Truly engage with your classmates, make lifelong friends, wander our vast open campus, and strive to be something more, something incredible, something Something royal, on behalf of our staff, students, and successes to be, we welcome you to Royal Academics. Besides the extremely uncomfortable voice that narrates the advert, the first thing that sticks out to me is that it seems the story we are going to be following takes place in the north of England, specifically at a school named Royal Academics. From the footage shown in the commercial, it's likely that the school is privately owned and ran as a business. This would also explain why it's being advertised in the first place. At the end of the trailer, there is also some blurred out information, most likely a URL link to a website. Why is this blurred out? I'm not too sure. But so far, Nothing too out of the ordinary. Every student who goes to Royal Academics deserves a place to stay at suited drinking. Every room contains four boats, a bathroom, closet, and kitchen, all of which are to be shared between you and three other roommates. Our trusted house parents will take care of you every day and night to make sure you're comfortable in your new home. They are so nice and friendly, you will never want to leave. This advert indicates to us that Royal Academics is actually a boarding school, meaning that kids actually live on campus in their own dormitories and are taken care of by people called house parents. This would also explain why the school looked so large in the first commercial, since there's hundreds, if not thousands, of kids living there. Obviously, for you hard-working parents, it can be difficult to leave your children with people you don't know. So here are some unbiased reviews from our previous customers. My kids love their time at Royal Academics. My kids love their time at Royal Academics. My kids love their time at Royal Academics. My kids love their time. We hope to see you and your child at Open Day on the 14th of October, so you can see just how good our facilities really are. Come thrive with us at Royal Academics. The end segment of the advert is where we get our first glimpse into the disturbing imagery that is used throughout these tapes. When the AI generated voice is quoting reviews the parents made about the school, not only are the women's faces on screen extremely uncanny, but the children's faces in the background are morphed and distorted. Personally, it doesn't seem like a great way to get people to pay to go to your school, but hey, that's just me. After attending Royal Academics, I was given several scholarships, and after accepting one, I was able to fulfill my dream as a lawyer at one of the UK's top firms. The third advert seems to be a former student, now turned successful lawyer, vouching for the capabilities of the Royal Academics education system. And spectacular education. I have my friends to thank, my family to thank, and most importantly, Mr. Martin, the owner of Royal Academics, to thank for creating an environment to thrive in. And there it is, the first mention of the name Martin, 
Seeing as the series of tapes M has been sending me are called The Martin Files, I was wondering when he would make his first appearance. And it seems Martin is in fact the owner of Royal Academics, which is an interesting development to say the least. Anyway, that is the last of the adverts introducing us to Royal Academics, but this isn't the end of the first episode that M sent me. In fact, there's quite a bit more. Hi, and what is your name? My name is and I will be showing you around the campus today. Follow me, right this way please. Right is Admiral Hall. It's the oldest building in the school, which was founded in 1912. Oh wow, look at how beautiful that is. You must feel so lucky to be able to go here every day. I love it here. It's so beautiful, especially in the summer. Looks like it. This right here is the main entrance to our English department. If you look around, you'll see many different works of art, as well as life-sized animals. Is that the tiger? Yes. Go right this way. Watch out for the stairs. They are quite steep. Oh, well this is an interesting looking classroom. If I recall, a faculty member had told me this was a child's bedroom at one point, prior to being turned into a classroom. Interesting. Yes. Okay, follow me please. So, what are the students like here? Mm -hmm. This tape seems to follow on from the second advert that mentioned an open day for the school. We seem to be in the perspective of a child recording that exact open day, accompanied by one of their parents. Right this way, please. This is our pool. Will my daughter be able to get to use this often? Yes. Every two weeks, kids her age get to go to a swimming lesson at this very pool. We have got our own dedicated swimming instructors. And our pool is the best you are going to get in England. This is the kind of pool Olympic athletes use. That sounds great. Our pool hall is state of the art. Enough to fit four whole basketball courts. This place is huge. That's what she said. <laughs> so, what are the teachers like here? They are very professional and excel at what they do. Some teachers specialize in certain subjects, so no teacher is ever inexperienced in their craft. And what about Mr. Martin? Mr. Martin lives right on campus. However, we do not really see him that much in classrooms all that much. I met him earlier on and he seemed really nice. Yes. However, we do not really see him that much in classrooms all that much. I met him earlier on and he seemed really nice. Yes. The dialogue between the parent and the student is extremely strange, unnatural, and clearly meant to sound scripted. Even going as far as to include a fake laugh track that plays after a that's what she said joke. On top of that, the child's voice seems to be so distorted to the point where it's impossible to even comprehend what they're saying. And for some reason, there is repeated audio about Mr. Martin between the parent and the student. Clearly, all of these things are being done on purpose. This is the boarding bathroom. It's a bathroom. This is a nice bathroom. Well, that's the end of the tour. Oh, I thought we had more areas to go to. Like, the mall. 
We are out of time, but I have a brochure if you would like it. Well, thanks. And thanks for having us. Thank you both so much for taking the Royal Academics call. Hope to see you again soon. So, I guess that's our official introduction to Mr. Martin. And while his face was blurred out at the end, the voice and the camera distortion clearly paints him as the villain of our story. So, I guess the question is, why is he the villain? What is Mr. Martin hiding? Or better yet, why did somebody go out of their way to make these tapes? Wake up. The second episode M sent me is titled Martin's Daughter. The description continues the theme of throwing in a few random numbers, and this time it's 2, 7, and 1. But vague numbers aside, let's take a look at this second episode. I don't know what to do. Um. Yeah, but I'm his daughter. I work here. I mean, I spent my whole life here with him. This tape seems to be security camera footage from the office of Mr. Martin's daughter. But unfortunately, the audio is extremely distorted, jumbled, and at some parts, even reversed. So, I'll just explain the key points to take away from this tape. The main thing that we learn from this sequence is that Mr. Martin, for whatever reason, has transferred ownership of Royal Academics to his daughter, who again, is the person talking in this security footage. The daughter seems to be conversing with another member of staff about the whole situation she has found herself in, and at one point, even says, I just can't believe that he would be accused of something like this. While the member of staff is trying to comfort the daughter by recounting how good of a person Mr. Martin was to him, the daughter can't help but question if the accusations against her father are real. On top of all of that, judging from the dialogue shared between the two at the end of the tape, it seems that Mr. Martin has decided to fly over to France to lie low in wake of these allegations coming to light. Unfortunately, the security footage seems to abruptly cut off right as we are about to hear important details on what Mr. Martin is being accused of. So it's very difficult to say what exactly made him so scared that he had to transfer the entirety of his company to his daughter. But what this tape does tell us is that either Mr. Martin has some dark skeletons in his closet or someone is trying to frame him possibly an ex-business partner, a student maybe, or even an opposing school. At least, that's what the daughter and staff member are theorizing. But for now, for us, the viewers, that's all speculation. Regardless, it's an interesting development, to say the least. Only three years. Only three years, only three years, only three years, only three years, only three years. Episode 2 ends with the vocal refrain, only three years, accompanied by images of jail cells. This refrain also comes back later on in the series. However, at this point, it's not clear what this exactly implies. Only three years. Only three years, only three years, only three years, only three The third tape M sent me is titled Martin's Rules, 
And this is where things really get interesting. Just like the previous two episodes, there are more random numbers in the description. This time, we have 8 and 4. But also, below that number is the phrase, one pound for what? This seems to be a direct reference to the next tape we are about to watch, which is by far one of the most disturbing ones yet. Judging from the opening and the outdoor scenery, we are likely in the perspective of a student that goes to Royal Academics walking around the campus late at night, and for some reason, recording their journey along the way. We can see that the student is visibly anxious walking around the school grounds, most likely because they are not allowed outside their room late at night, which leaves us to ask why they wanted to go outside in the first place. I'm not gonna lie, the first time I watched that ending, it got me, but at least now we know why the student was out so late. All they wanted was a snack from the vending machine. Unfortunately, Mr. Martin was quick to catch whoever it was, and this time, his face was unblurred. Another interesting thing I would like to point out is at exactly 1.06, when the camera flicks to the left, we can see a slight figure behind the brick sign, which raises the question, who is this? Is it Mr. Martin, another member of staff, or a figment of the student's imagination? The next tape seems to be a PowerPoint presentation shown to younger kids at the school. The presentation, rightly named Martin's Rules, presents all the things that students should follow to get the most out of their education. And although this segment seems harmless, once we get onto the fourth rule, the vibe of the video changes. Do not enter restricted areas. If we see you enter these areas on our cameras, it could result in suspension or detention. Rule 5. 
keep your hands and feet to yourself. All students must keep their hands and feet to themselves. The most disturbing rule, however, is rule number eight, which is only flashed on the screen for a couple seconds. Win three sporting games to win a trip to Mr. Martin's house. After finishing all the rules, the presentation seems to move on to a slideshow of pupils that have attended Royal Academics, with some miscellaneous images sprinkled in as well. These pictures really show how big the age range of the students attending the school really is. In fact, judging by these images, Royal Academics seems to be split into four sections that are represented by colour of uniform. If we go off common UK school year groups, yellow is likely ages 4 to 11, purple and blue is likely ages 11 to 16, and pupils that wear suits are likely age 16 to 18. Along with this information, we also have another reference to the word thrive, this time on what seems to be a timetable of sorts, and we also see more strange photos of the school itself some from current day, and some from the past. But by far the strangest aspect of these slideshows is the random black slides placed in both of them, and the random flashes of this image, where Mr. Martin seems to be standing next to a kid with their face blurred out. Screenshotting the black slides and manually increasing the exposure reveals distorted images of Mr. Martin, signifying whoever made these tapes wanted his face to be in these presentations. But why? Okay, there's a lot that's happened, so let's just quickly recap what we know so far. An anonymous person called M has requested I upload a series of analog horror tapes to my second channel, named The Martin Files. We still don't know the intentions of M or the person who made the tapes. It would be stupid to rule out M as a possible creator of the tapes, however, we cannot be 100% sure. The tapes take place in a private boarding school called Royal Academics, and the story that is being told seems to centre around a man named Mr. Martin, who owns the school. The school has interests of gaining investors' capital to expand the campus, and the school is advertised as a very prestigious and career-defining experience for kids aged 4 to 18. It's clear that the tapes have been tampered with by someone who is trying to expose a more disturbing story. For example, the uncomfortable use of AI imagery, and hidden photos of Mr. Martin. These hidden photos, along with the title and general portrayal of Mr. Martin, suggests that maybe he is at the root of whatever M or whoever made these tapes is trying to bring to light. I, I also have a theory that some kids who live at the school have heard rumours or have had interactions with Mr. Martin that are making them paranoid. Like what we see in the third episode, where the girl goes outside to grab a snack from the vending machine, and starts seeing things that might not be there in reality. Also, for some unknown reason, it seems that Mr. Martin has transferred ownership of the school to his daughter Jess, presumably due to whatever wrongdoing he has done becoming public information. Whatever this wrongdoing might be, it must have legal implications, Otherwise, drastic measures like transferring ownership of your life's work wouldn't be necessary. This would then tie in to that strange only three years refrain we hear at the end of the second episode, accompanied by the AI images of jail cells. Maybe whatever Martin has done has resulted in him going to jail for three years, 
And maybe the person making or tampering with the tapes doesn't think that that time is enough for the laws he may have broken. Now, while this is a lot of information to take in, there's even more we have to discuss before diving into the fourth episode, because I've purposefully left something out up until now, as I believe it could give us a hint into what Mr. Martin's dark secret is. But to explain that, we need to go back into the description of the past three episodes of The Martin Files. So what I haven't told you is that in each one of the previous episodes, there's been a link in the description to a YouTube video on a channel called The Red Tapes. These links were provided by M and given to me prior to the videos going public. The Red Tapes consist of three small episodes set in Royal Academics, but seem to tell a much more straightforward story. A story that could help us unravel what Mr. Martin could be in trouble for, and a story that confirms that these tapes are in fact based on real events. These three episodes tell the story of Thomas Ball, a house parent who worked at Royal Academics. The first tape is a low quality recording of an empty shower. The second tape is a video of the bathroom door opening, and the third tape is a screenshot of Thomas Ball's arrest. And for the first time, this video shows an actual picture of a human being without their face blurred out. This is where things get extremely dark. Searching Thomas Ball arrested into Google will take you to a news article by the Scarborough News, titled, Teacher Thomas Ball installed spy camera in North Yorkshire school bathroom and had a stash of child sex images. This is a real news article by a legitimate publisher. And this is also where the series becomes a lot more than just a bunch of analog horror tapes. The fact that this could happen at any school is absolutely terrifying. But yet again, the question comes back to, what is Martin's involvement in this? Was Martin friends with Thomas? Did he know what was going on the whole time? Did he help Thomas with his scheme? Or is it something completely different? Maybe episode four will get us closer to finding the truth. The fourth tape M sent me is titled Martin's House. In the description, we are, of course, greeted with more random numbers. This time, we have negative 1.292. But we are also greeted with a fully working URL link to a website, possibly the one blurred out in the very first advert back in episode 1. Heading to www.royalacademics.co.uk will take you to this website. However, it seems that nothing can be accessed without the login information, so we will come back to this at a later point. For now, let's take a look at episode 4.
This tape really does fill in a lot of the blanks and also raises some new questions. First of all, this video takes place in Martin's house. At least I'd assume so given the title of the episode. But one thing that I noticed is it seems that this is not the first time we have been here. This is a screenshot of the house the child exited from the start of episode three. And this is a screenshot of the front door at Martin's house. Now, what do we know is outside that front door at the start of the third episode? That's right, the entire school. Which leads us to believe that Mr. Martin lives on campus. This would also explain why kids could win a trip to his house after winning three sporting matches, because he's right next door. Another thing that backs up this theory is the fact that both kids ended up being tracked down by Martin near the end of the tapes. But why on earth would Martin want children in his home? Well, if it's anything like Thomas Ball's motives, then I can't imagine there's good intentions behind his actions. Also, I don't think that it's a coincidence that there is a barcode on the TV screen. For those who don't know, I tend to use barcodes from time to time in my videos. Each line of the barcode can be decoded to a specific letter. This allows me to hide hidden messages in my videos. However, this barcode is unfortunately too distorted by the VHS filter to understand what it says. But this doesn't take away from the fact that I am now certain that these tapes have been made specifically for me. Speaking of the TV, it seems at this point in our story, the police investigation on Mr. Martin has finally come out to the public, which likely means we are close to figuring out what the hell he has actually done. We might even find out in this next tape. Dear parents, we are writing this letter to you in the hopes of being fully transparent with the current situation regarding Mr. Martin, the owner and head of Royal Academics. Some of you may not have heard of Mr. Martin. Others may have spoken to him at open day. However, it is important to update you on the current allegations against him, as he is the owner of the school. Yesterday, Mr. Martin pleaded not guilty at Leeds Crown Court to all of the allegations against him, during a 20-minute hearing, the 24 charges allege he abused five children, most of them pupils at the school, and made sexual suggestions to a sick, who was also a pupil. A trial date was then set for July 10 next year. He is legally not allowed to enter the premises of Royal Academics, or have any unsupervised contact with anyone under the age of 18. We understand that this is a horrible thing to hear as parents who have children in our school. And we want to say, from the bottom of our hearts, we are doing everything we possibly can to keep your children safe. As of now, the ownership of Royal Academics has been transferred over to Jess Martin, who is Mr. Martin's daughter. We are positive in her abilities to keep our school thriving in the right direction. If you have any more questions regarding this unfortunate incident, please email royalacademicssupport at thrive.com. Thank you. From the Royal Academics team. Well, if I'm being honest, I'm not surprised. From his portrayal throughout the show, and his clear obsession with getting kids into his home, it's no mystery how this happened. The upsetting part is that due to what we know about Thomas Ball, this likely is referencing a real human being and real events. This letter does state that these are just allegations, however, and he has not been charged with anything at the moment. 
So, there is a chance that he's innocent, and is actually being framed, like what his daughter mentioned in episode 2. But, I don't think that that is very likely. Shaborg information, November 9.9 Alpha Charlie. We've got about 4 minutes to run, uh, 9 miles north of the field. November 9 Alpha, 9 Alpha Charlie, Shaborg information, hello. Runway 10 news, wind 150 degrees, 2-2 knot, gusting 3-2. This tape seems to be the flight communications from England to France. We can see that Mr. Martin is a passenger on the plane, which signifies that he is going out of the country until his next trial date. This is also very likely to be the same flight his daughter was talking about in the security footage. However, this does open up the possibility of him fleeing, running away from his problems, so whether this is an escape plan or simply a vacation is still up in the air. Uh, turbulence on the final runway 10. Hey Roger, and uh, report left base runway 10 now, Charlie. And the Alpha now for Charlie's left base for runway 10. Yo, so your girl's been bored surfing the interwebs and stuff, and I came across YouTube. Of course, everybody knew Mama be on YouTube. Well, I came across this dude's videos, right? Nice videos, high quality. I ain't seen nobody else on YouTube doing nothing like this. But, dude, he only had like five videos. I done finished the whole channel already. Like, I don't understand. Where is the rest of the content? Like, where is dude at, though? Basically, what she's saying is, she has recently come across an excellent YouTube channel and is really enjoying the content. Clearly, this creator is putting in a lot more effort than the rest of the competition. However, this effort has resulted in infrequent uploads. So although the channel is high quality, there needs to be more quantity to satisfy her needs. Patreon, what do you think about that? Well listen, these creators who produce high quality entertainment with minimal help usually need an outcome of support especially channels that deal with mature content and have volatile monetization. The solution is quite simple. Supporting the creator on Patreon.com is a great way to help them financially, and it also allows them to hire much needed assistance when necessary. Helping that creator on Patreon usually equates to higher quality content and more of it. Furthermore, by pledging money monthly, you can get bonus perks like behind the scenes content, early teasers, and uncensored versions of videos for five bucks a month. And honestly, that sounds like a win-win to me. Basically, what he's saying is, this guy whose content you've been fiending for might need a little help to ramp up production. Donating monthly to his Patreon could help up the quantity rate of the videos you like so much, and might even increase the quality too. Plus, you get some perks for being such a good supporter. Oh, okay, okay, I didn't know that. That's great to know. I'm gonna go ahead and check that out.
And that is how the series ends, with a news broadcast of an uncensored Mr. Martin going into police custody, Morse code, and the return of the only three years refrain from episode two, which we can now safely say was in fact referring to the amount of jail time Mr. Martin would receive for what he did. Converting the Morse code that plays behind the distorted audio reveals the username for the website, and the password is unsurprisingly all the random numbers that we have been given throughout the series' descriptions. Typing these phrases into the website's login takes us to a page with the words, Hi Thomas, following in the footsteps of your boss I see, along with a multitude of links below it. These links take us to real news articles detailing Mr. Martin's court hearing, arrest, and crimes. Now that we have the login to the Royal Academics website, and access to the real-life news articles that connects the Martin files with the real crimes of Brian Martin, the story finally starts to make sense. In 1991, Brian Martin bought Royal Academics and moved the school from a town called Harrogate to a place called Thorpe Underwood Estate which is where he lived with his family, meaning he now lived on the school grounds. Since Royal Academics was a private boarding school, Martin would continue to reinvest the profits he had made back into the business, and eventually grew it to be a vast campus for learning that was inclusive of all genders and ages. This, along with the international advertising, great test results, turned the whole school into one of the most diverse and academic schools in the north of England. However, all of this was fueled by much more sinister ambitions. Abusing the fact that some children lived on campus away from home, Martin took advantage of the very kids whose parents were paying him thousands of dollars a year purely for his own personal pleasure. Martin sexually assaulted a boy in the late 2000s and committed indecent assault on a girl in the early to mid 90s. Both of these crimes were proven to be true in a trial spanning from 2018 to 2019. In that trial, Brian Martin was also accused of six other child abuse offenses of boys and girls ages 13 to 17, but the jury could not definitively say if the accusations were true or not, so the charges were dropped. Mr. Martin was then sentenced to three years and three months in jail. When the allegations and court hearing became public to the parents, Martin would fly over to France and would also not be allowed back onto school grounds. However, before the allegations became public, Mr. Martin transferred all of the businesses over to his daughter, as he predicted he would likely go to jail for what he had done. What makes this story even more disturbing is the public comments under the news articles and Facebook posts of Mr. Martin's arrest, because it's here that we can read personal anecdotes from people who were aware of Mr. Martin and the school. This user's comment sticks out in particular, I took my daughter out of there when I heard the head boarding staff member tell my daughter and girls in her room, let's draw the blinds girls, we don't want Mr. Martin looking in. That's when I realized his home was a stone throw away from the boarding room my daughter was in. When I questioned this, they made it out like I was this crazy woman. It was like, how dare I question anything about Mr. Martin? Look what he does for the children. I'm so grateful I saw sense and took it out of there. Unfortunately, the story of Mr. Martin is yet another example of a person in extreme power using their influence and money to take advantage 
of innocent children. A story almost as common as a grain of sand. A grain of sand, only sentenced to three years and 90 days in the bottom of the ocean, sealed by the prison bars of the water above it. But our mystery is not over yet. There's still a few more questions we need to answer. Unlike many other analog horror series, the actual story of the Martin Files isn't really left up to interpretation. By the end of the episodes, it's quite clear the crimes that Brian Martin and Thomas Ball committed. So that means the main mysteries of the Martin Files are why were they made? Why were they sent to me? Who even is M? And who is the boy that appears with Mr. Martin throughout the whole series? Up until this point in the video, there has been no indication of what M's involvement is besides having access to the tapes. And no matter how many times I try to reverse image search this random JPEG of Mr. Martin next to this random boy, I always just get nothing. Yet, these questions are so important to answer because it's the only thing throughout this entire series that is left up to interpretation. But unfortunately, these questions seem virtually impossible to answer. Or at least they might seem virtually impossible to you. So what I haven't exactly been honest about is I know the identities of M and the boy because they're both me. I was a previous student of Royal Academics. I met Mr. Martin on open day. That's actually where the picture was taken. And I was the person who made the tapes. But I'm sure you have a lot of questions, so let me explain. Basically, the story of Mr. Martin and the school he owned is a story that I've really wanted to tell for a long time. However, if I sat here and just talked to you for 20 minutes, then no one's going to listen. So, I decided that if I wanted to tell this story, I had to find a way to make people care. That's when I had the idea to partner up with a talented analog horror enthusiast slash extremely talented VFX artist to create the Martin Files, which would tell the entire story through creepy old found footage taking inspiration from the Walton Files, the Backrooms, Petscop, etc, all, all the classics. We then came up with the idea of M, who would send me the tapes to post on the second channel. Obviously, we changed the name of the real school, we blurred out all the logos, but we still wanted to use stock footage of the physical campus. The most important thing was trying to tell the story through my perspective of experiencing what it was like to go to school every day, after the owner had just been accused of being a pedophile. I remember when the letter to parents was sent out. I remember not being allowed to talk about it at school. I remember people talking about how strange it was that he lived right next to the girl's boarding house on campus. I remember hearing stories about people going around to eat at his house after winning three sporting matches in a row. And just like many other people, I think a three year sentence is nowhere near long enough for what he did. So, to quickly clear up any questions that you might have, no, Mr. Martin did not do anything inappropriate to me or anyone I was friends with at the school. I only had a couple of interactions with him before he fled to France when the allegations and court hearing came out to the public. And yes, I stayed at the school for years after all of this went down. 
Also, I don't want this video to paint the current version of the school in a bad light. Besides Mr. Martin, I actually had great interactions with the majority of the staff there, and I actually, for what it's worth, really did have a good time at that school. So please, to the people watching this video, do not send any harassment to the staff, the pupils, because they are not responsible for Brian Martin's actions. I want to apologize for deceiving you throughout this video. However, I hope that you understand that sometimes you have to trick people into listening to a story that would have otherwise been forgotten. And I believed it was important to share my perspective on growing up in a beautiful school owned by a prolific pedophile. A pedophile that is most likely out on parole by the time you're watching this video. Oh, yeah.